thing. Until we know what we're doing, we're not vetting people. We haven't been vetted. The truth is we haven't been vetting people coming into this country for a very long time because this is what Wall Street wants. It's a global world with no boundaries, the free exchange of labor, goods, and uh, services throughout the world. It's a nice thought. It will never work. And we're native. We're primitive. We like our country. We like our homes. We like our states. We're not made to be that way. It's a pipe dream, and it's and it's getting a lot of people pissed off, and it's screwing up the country. Let me ask you this. Did you hear the opening to my show two and a half hours ago where I said that the staggering number of 680,000 Muslims were admitted to the United States under Obama just between 09 and 13? Does, does that bother you, that they're Muslims? doesn't surprise me in the least that he did that. Look, but, 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 but wait, well, hold on. You're a Democrat, though. You voted for him. I voted for him reluctantly. Yes, I voted for him. Um, do you, do you, as an American progressive woman, fear the Muslim invasion? I'm suspicious of it. I don't fear. I'm not afraid of it. I think it's a bad policy. I think right now. How do you, as a modern American woman who is a feminist and a Democrat, how do you feel when you walk past a woman covered head to toe in a tent? You know, I haven't seen him in the whole hijab, but I uh, uh, the whole time. But recently, I have. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not intelligent enough to know exactly what her thinking is. I would love to talk to them. But uh, why would a woman? Why would a woman willingly lock herself up in a, in a tent and subjugate herself to some man? Why would she do that? of a book. Michael, when I was young, my mother and father took me to Turkey. This is in the late 60s. And I had, we went to the Blue Mosque, and I was young, and I didn't know, when we went there, a man had my, a man took my father, my mother, myself, and my brother, and was reading the Koran. Of course, we didn't understand them. An elderly man stood next to us. <laughs> Somebody was laughing because to us Americans, it seemed like he was laughing, so we smiled at him. He wasn't laughing. He was hysterically crying. And it... I'd never seen... No, what was he crying over? The, the reading of the Koran. And I had never seen, yeah, yeah, I grew up a Christian, right? Uh, so in other words, these people take their religion real seriously. It's not real seriously. It's something that I'm not sure any of us can understand. It's interesting well it's worth listening to you because that that hits the nail on the head christians don't take their religion very seriously you know several months ago i said that only a militant christianity can save the world did you hear that show i did you see the problem with christianity as i see it is that it's turned into something political that it never was meant to be christianity was never meant to be a pacifist religion Christianity was something else a long time ago, and it was slowly converted and perverted by the liberal, the liberals within the Christian movement turned it into a social agency. Anyway, I think we've done a very good job. You're a very, very good speaker, by the way, and I know that you're a loyal listener because I know you've called before. You love this show. I get it. So I'm sending you, a, shall I say, a Christmas, or are you Christian or Jewish? I'm, yeah, let's just say I'm a religious tourist. I'm looking at everything. Okay, but I'm trying to send you Government Zero for a holiday, so what holiday sh should I send it to you for? The moon holiday or what? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you sound like an old hippie from Berkeley to me. I'm not an old hippie from Berkeley. And nothing wrong with an old hippie from Berkeley, as long as they're a realist. I don't care if they wear tie-dyes and they have uh, beards under their arms. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Here's another story that was likely to be banned soon by uh, the government. 65% of the Syrian refugees pouring into Europe cannot read or write, and they cannot join the workforce. Now, what sane nation on earth brings in illiterates who will go on to welfare? What sane nation on earth would bring in unemployable illiterates other than those who want to destroy their own nation? 
and Angela Merkel is put on the cover of Time magazine. Now, Time magazine is not what you think it is. They named a woman of the year. Big deal. They mean communist operative of the year. They mean socialist psycho of the year. Of course they would put her on the cover. She's destroying Germany. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's agitating. Reuters, U.S. top court divided over affirmative action in college admissions. In other words, in the opening arguments back and forth. Anthony Kennedy, they're calling a conservative. You hear conservative? Anthony Kennedy, they're calling a conservative. Mace uh, send it back to the University of Texas. Uh, to a trial judge to let the University of Texas submit more evidence to the defendant's consideration of race, race, among other factors in picking applicants. Who can support affirmative action in this day and age? Why would you support affirmative action at this time in American history? You mean there aren't any poor whites, underprivileged whites? And do you know what affirmative action is doing to Asians in this country? They may as well not apply to UC Berkeley. There are too many intelligent Asians. They can't get in because of affirmative action. You know my position on it. Let the best woman win. Best grades, best SATs, you get right up to the top of the line. I don't care if it's 100% Asian, it wouldn't matter to me. But uh, now they're using affirmative action to keep Asians out. Okay, 855-497-282 was the phone number. Craig on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage. This is Craig. Um, I, I saw that, that Facebook post last night, and I was horrified by the images that uh, all those, they, they were holding up and all that. And I don't understand when we're going to wake up to what's coming. Well, why do you suppose Zuckerberg have had his liberal minions take my page down from that page? Why did they admit it? They did to me what Britain has done to me. I didn't say these things. I just showed what they're saying outside the Danish embassy. Slay those who insult Islam. Europe, you will pay. Demolition is on its way. Butcher those who mock Islam. Europe, you will pay. Your extermination is on its way. Wait till the real Holocaust occurs. Why shouldn't the world see the faces of hatred? America needs to wake up. I mean, I, I Well, Facebook took it down. Once again, a liberal Jewish man, Mark Zuckerberg, is misinterpreting what his parents taught him. Okay, what can I say? Thanks for calling. Just uh, thanks for calling. Jerry on WFAY Radio, what's your topic? I hope it's in. Um, quickly, um, I just want to thank you for um, speaking the truth, and you've taught me a lot. And I just want to delight in your day, basically. Um, I love it when you when you get humorous. I, I love your humor. Um, I've had tears running down my face. I was just wondering if you ever have considered writing a, a humorous book. What's the funniest thing I've ever done on the radio? Let's do humor. Oh, I love it when you start getting on Hillary's case. You know, I just, I just love. Yeah, but I, I'm not the best on that. I don't do a big job on that one. I think I've done better jobs at imitating Bernie Sanders. That was my last bit best comedic uh, outing on the Savage Nation when I when I channeled Bernie Sanders. I thought that was funny. Oh yeah, that was. Hilarious! I, I I swear, I wish you would just do a book on on some of your humor. And also, I love it when you talk about your dog Teddy. Curious today, how's he doing? Well, I have good I have good news for you. He's sleeping five feet from me on his big fat pillow. He uh, watches every show. He has he probably knows more about politics than most uh, PhD students in America from having sat through all of these shows. God, if he could only talk. But there's a book coming out on Teddy this May. Did you, did you hear that the other day? My publisher and photographer were out all weekend photographing Teddy and I, the second uh, session. They did the first one last summer of Teddy and I fixing cars, Teddy and I eating, Teddy and I doing this, Teddy and I doing that. It's, it's going to be me and Teddy, a day in the life of kind of thing. So I think you're going to find it. It's going to have some humor in it if I can. i got to generate that humor, though. I haven't even written the book entirely. I just started it. We just got the pictures. So you're going to be able to at least see this guy. I mean, the photographer, Vincent Ramini, is the best dog photographer in the world. He captured Teddy in in, in ways you can never imagine. I, I can't even describe it. It's too far in advance, but it's a great book, and it'll be out in May, uh, Teddy and I. May I ask you, I'm not even sure, I'm sorry, what kind of dog is Teddy? Oh, that's interesting. You asked about him, and you think you know him. What do you think he is? Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't know. Um... <laughs> Uh, I'm completely... Well, no, it's interesting. In other words, you know I have a dog, Teddy, who's with me all the time. You know he's my pal. You know we're like uh, like 
I don't know, we're just like a, a pair, a duo. And you don't know what kind of dog he is. That's interesting. People, you know, people hear things they don't. He's an 11 pound toy poodle, gray in color. He is 11 or 12 years in age. And he's as spunky as a puppy because of what I feed him. I did not feed him any diets that are recommended by anybody who knows much about dogs. It's like I, I, I used to love when I had babies when they were young. I had a few gay friends. They were the biggest experts on child rearing. They had no children of their own, but they had, they had more advice from me on how to raise children than anybody else. It's the same with dogs. People who don't own dogs tell me how to raise a dog. Don't feed them that. It's not good for them. Don't feed them human food. The dog jumps four feet in the ground from what I feed him. It's the Savage Nation. Be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It is the fifth night of Hanukkah. It's the fifth night of Hanukkah. One of the reasons I like this holiday is still like a little kid in me. I like to light these candles. I, I light them alone like a kid. I remember lighting them in New York City next to a frozen over window, you know, that kind of thing. And it, it shows the quickness of time, the passage of time. Here's a holiday that you light a candle every night for eight nights, right? And it's like, if you miss a candle, you feel guilty, not because it's a religious thing. It's the passage of time. Like, oh, my God, it's the fifth night, I didn't even do anything kind of thing. It, it teaches you the value of time and the fleeting nature of life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So maybe that's too maudlin for the average pill-popping American. I don't really know. I don't really know. What can you do about it? I mean, December's already racing away from me. I haven't gotten to the ice skating rink in San Francisco but once. All year long, I wait to see them build an ice skating rink down at Justin Herman Plaza, down by the ferry terminal. And I like the ice. They put, it reminds me of Rockefeller Center in New York, and I love to see the people skating. And it reminds me of the holidays and Courier and Ives. It's a beautiful thing to witness. I've only seen it like once in the whole time. And before I get there again, it'll be a taken down already. They take it down like January 2nd. It's amazing. And every year comes the same way. And the holidays come upon us. The winter comes upon us. Before you know it, the snow is here. I always say, I'm going to go up to the Sierras. I want to see the snow. I never get there anymore. I mean, pre-radio, I was up in the Sierras in the winter. I take days to do this, days to do that. I don't do it anymore. I'm a slave to my microphone the way my grandfather, may he rest in peace, was a slave to the to the sewing machine. <laughs> It was like from the treadle to the microphone in one in two generations. You know, I'm still a slave to my business. This is what I do. I can't leave the microphone behind. I have studios in L.A. I have a studio in L.A. that I built at great expense. I've never used it. Would you believe it? Years ago, I used to do shows from L.A. I don't do them anymore. I plan I do them soon. I have a studio in Florida. I never go to it. I, it's amazing to me. I'm stuck. It's the same view every day. Why? Because we're at war. I feel as though... We're in a different phase of American history and American life and radio and everywhere else. I believe these are very, de I believe we are in, in new times. We are under siege, both because of the insanity of this government with open borders and plain English and attacking those amongst us who are the most vigilant as the enemy and letting those who would attack us, protecting them with their dumb, stupid statements. Anyone who says a word that she doesn't like, she'll look into you with the, the whole war, weight of the Justice Department. And, and the, the preachers of hate inside the mosques, she's not looking into. That's off limits. It's a world that's upside down. So I feel that I can't afford to take a day off on the radio. Someone wrote me, please tell us what you feed, Teddy. I am a former ballet student. I want to jump four feet off the ground, too. <laughs> so I answered a chicken, carrots, and kibble. He usually leaves the kibble over, and he won't eat it. He'll go through the chicken. If it's fresh, he'll, he'll polish it in the round like, a, like an inhalation. He gets a hot breast in there. Or I'm sorry, a hot up. I'm sorry. If he gets a hot cut up chicken breast, i got to be very careful with my choice of words. If he gets a hot cut up chicken breast in his dish with kibble and carrots, the chicken breast is gone, vacuumed up. He'll only eat the kibble if I, if I leave it there for the next two meals, and I don't give him the chicken. Four feet in the air, no special, nothing. It's the little dogs, the, the purebred little dogs are very strong. It's the, the, the purebred big dogs that die young, very heartbreaking. They're like a person dies on you. Five years of age, six years of age, they die. The, uh, the wolfhound, my friend had an Irish wolfhound. What a magnificent animal, my God. Fion, my friend owned an Irish bar in North Beach. Bar's closed now, that's sad. Everything changes. What are you going to do? You go through North Beach, the whole thing is changing. It's like a 
the, you know what North Beach is if you're not from San Francisco? It's an Italian district built by the Italian people. 